Hay ağırlı film. So hope got now the access, right? Everybody? Yes, sir. So today I uploaded one more file. Uh, that is the Linux script in, okay, in the lab folder. So you can see. So this is the Linux script that we are going to learn. So I already connected using my party. Okay, and I changed the background. Why I changed the background from black to white? Because we'll, we'll be writing some scripting file. So its color will be changed. So the black color that was not, you will be not able to easily see that color. Okay. So that is a little bit dark color. That's why I changed this to the white background. Since everything is safe, this is the party only. Okay. I'm deleting all the files, whatever we created is there. Hey, good morning. Uh, this is Sridhar. I have the access um, in the document section. I find only one document and that is a handwritten document in the PDF format. Yeah, that is the Linux class notes, right? Yeah. Uh, in the lab section, you'll be finding all the lab related files. Yeah. So that is it, right? You're not, share, uh, you're not sharing this uh, uh, screenshots and all. Whatever you have written. Well, a screenshot for what? Yeah, whatever you're showing on the screen, these these documents also you're sharing. Yeah, yeah. The, this documents like Linux commands lab, which we talked about, these are already shared, right? In the lab section. Okay, in the lab section. Let me check. Thank you. <clears throat> So how many of you have idea of the prior program? Anybody here? Like in college days, they were tried the basic programming also, anybody? No, everybody totally new in the program. Eh? Okay, okay, no issue. The first thing you have to understand, uh, why is scripting, okay? So on our daily day-to-day -day basis, what we do, we run some commands in the Linux, right? Either it will be ls, pwd, hit command, tell command. So like this way, whatever the command till now we learn. So we run all these commands, okay? So that is the one of the way that you are writing the command, pressing enter, you are getting the command out. Now, where the scripting comes in the picture. So currently you are doing it using the manual, right? As a human, you are coming here, you are connecting to the party, you are clicking, uh, writing the command like C-A-L, okay, using your keyboard, then we're pressing in that, and then this output is coming, okay? But when we are talking about a scripting, what we can do, whatever the command I want to run, okay? Rather than writing directly in this cell, okay, we can directly keep that command in a file. And when you store that command in a file, so you don't have to run the command. You have to just run the file, basically execute the file. So once you execute the file, automatically that command, whatever you written inside that file will be also run, okay? So let me first show you. So two to three things first you have to understand in the scripting that whenever you are creating a scripting file, okay, remember that that file should end with the dot as such extension, okay? Uh, you can give any name, but the file should end with the dot as such extension. That is the first thing, okay? Second thing, uh, once you are... Uh, anybody mic is open? Okay. If you're not speaking, can you? Okay. 
second thing uh, whenever you are creating a file okay in that file the first line will be this one okay what is this line this line is known as the cbank command okay this line basically tell us which is the sale we, we are working on so if you hit a command here go dollar You'll see answer is bin mass. That means currently whichever the operating system I am using, inside that, the cell language they are using is slash bin slash mass. Okay. But there are multiple languages. Okay. So if you try to search it on the Google. Different cell Linux. You will find there are different different types of the cells are available. Okay. And if you go in this link. Okay, you will see that there is a asset sale. Okay, there is a bash sale, CS sale. So there are so many sales, uh, and on all of the sale, whatever you are doing, it will be same only. The first line, whatever you are writing, the CBank comment. Okay, that I said. In our case, we will be writing slash bin slash bash. Why so? Because whenever we are hitting the command in our Linux, it is printing slash bin slash bash. But sometimes it prints like this also, like slash bin slash csh. So in that case, we'll be writing the first line as this one. In pass, we'll be writing like this one, okay? Uh, in SS case, we'll be writing like this, okay? So it is different, different cell, how it is there, but um, best cell is the famous one, okay? So we'll be going with the best cell only. So now how we can start it, so that I'm going to show you now. The first thing, we'll be creating a file, okay? So, and also you have to understand how this uh, file is going to help you. So see the first file you are seeing the one that is the first command okay so the first script file whichever we are going to create that is for the printing hello world okay this is the simplest basically you are saying to linux can you print hello world so they will print it so to run this what you have to do you don't have to start with this you have to start with this first you will hit this command bi hello world dot asset see here in the screenshot also first we done ls then we hit the command bi hello world dot asset Whenever we are hitting the BI command, so you know there will be editor will be open. Okay, so what we will keep inside this editor? So we have to copy this and we have to paste it inside our hello world.sh file. Once you copy it, you will save it using the WQ. Okay, then you will read whether that content is saved or not. So see cat hello world.sh, we are able to see the exact same content pasted there. Okay. Once the file is there, so once you will try to run this using this, this is the way to run a file, okay, or basically execute a file. So dot slash hello world dot asset. So whatever the file name will be there, that you have to keep, and before that you have to keep dot slash. So if you try to see here, I was running, but it was saying permission denied because we don't have the permission. <laughs> and yesterday I talked about that whenever you want to run a file, you have to give them X permission. Okay. So yesterday we talked about different different permissions. And I said you that whenever you provide the X permission, file color will be changes. <coughs> file color will be changes to green color. Okay. <coughs> we want me to ask what is the use of LS siphon L or how is it? Money type, right? LS L in check. LS L was for the long listing, right? So if you'll see, there was no X permission. Okay, so once this is, <laughs> there is no X permission, we have to give the X permission. Like this way, you have to follow. So to give the X permission, we'll be hitting this command. And then you will again hit this command. You'll see that it will be printing hello world. See, again, this is insert once the color is changed after hitting the CH code command. And again, we read, so they printed the hello world. Okay, so this is the flow. So you will be starting with the second line. Okay, whenever you are opening the editor, you will be copy pasting this content. Okay, this is the content of the editor. And which file name you will be creating? You will be creating this file name. You can create any other file name also. Okay, but for the simplicity reason, like this is the file name hello world. That means in this file, we'll be keeping the code to print the hello. Like this way it will work. So let's start. So the first thing I'm clearing everything. Currently, I am the root user doing ls. There is no file present. The first thing we are going to do is we'll be hitting the bi command hello world. Okay. 
dot sh dot sh is the compulsory thing okay just press enter we it came inside this file i will press i for insert now in this we have to copy this content okay so we'll be right like this hatch solution mark slash bin slash bash okay this will be the compulsory line that we have to keep it in every scripting file okay that means we are going to run our code or whatever the command we are writing it should be run in the bash cell that's why we are doing it i'll press enter once we've done that then you have to just hit the command echo hello world okay why we are writing echo hello world so that also i let me show you echo hello world so let me duplicate this quickly Previously, also I shown you one time that what is the echo command can do. Okay, but let me show you quickly again. If you write echo and you will write something hello, echo will print exact same thing. If you write echo hello world, they will print hello world. Okay, so whatever you will write in the echo, they will print as it is. Okay, so that is the meaning of the echo command. And our final goal is to print hello world. So I will just write echo. Can you print hello world? And they will be going to print. That. Okay, so that's why this is the simple command. Just you have to understand that echo is a command which is going to help you, okay, to print the hello world. Okay, without uh, writing echo, you cannot print the hello world like, as it is in the cell. Okay, so once you got this and this line is completed, what you will do, you will simply save this file escape, w, and q. Okay, and that file will be saved. How you can verify that file is saved? Just hit the command cat hello world.sh and see. The content is visible, that means our content is saved. And this is the exact same content we copy before. Okay. Once the file is saved, so the, the second thing is we'll try to run this file. Okay. So if you try to run this file using the command dot slash and give the hello world dot sh. Hello world. If I'll try enter, so see they are saying permission here because we don't have the permission to run this file. And if you try to check the permission using ls l command, so see for this hello world dot sh, this is currently owned by the root user. It is belongs to root group only. So that permission is okay because I am running as a root user, so I have the permission. But as a root user, what should I have the permission? I only have the read and write permission. I don't have x permission. Okay. And if you remember, if there will be no x permission, I cannot run this file. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to make sure that X permission will be provided to the root user. Now it's totally on you whether you want to give the X permission to only to the root user or either you want to give the X permission to root user also, group user also, others user also. Okay. So can anybody tell me uh, from the yesterday if you remember R value was 4, W value was 2, X value was 1. Okay, so if you want to give the permission here R, W, S, what will be the Things will be writing. Anybody? Seven. Okay. Yeah. Correct. After seven, and if we don't want to give any permission to this person and this person, then what will be the value? I want to keep only R and R only. What will be the value? Four. Four. Yeah, four. Yeah. Four. Four. That's correct. Yet more seven. Four. Four. Seven will be the normal thing. So seven four four means yeah. it will be give R W X. Okay, and for this r dash dash r dash dash, it will be as it is. So let's write hello world dot as such. Now, if I do ls hyphen l, color is changed. It become the green color. Uh, can you mute? Uh, yeah, thank you. So now see, this is changed to the r w s. Okay, so this I only change for the root user. But if EC2 user or other user will try to run this command, they will be not able. Okay. And take an example, you know that this file is getting used by many of the people. So what you can do, uh, rather than just giving the seven permission only for the root user, you can give the permission like this, yes mod 755, okay? And just give the hello world dot sh. What will happen if you give 755? So you will see everybody got the X permission, okay? That means group also got the X permission and others also got the X So it's totally on you. Either you want to give the 755 or keep it 744. Okay. It's totally your personal choice. Okay. But I given you both the scenario. Once you made these changes and you give the X permission, automatically the color will be changed to the green color. Okay. That means this file becomes executable. And once this file becomes executable,
I have a question. My cell is showing this tape. Are you using <laughs> EC2 instance or how is it? So EC2 instance you are using. <laughs> so when you are launching the instance, are you done with the Amazon Linux only? Then you did not install the Amazon Linux, right? Amazon Linux 2 and your cell is ZSH. I don't know how it can be possible because for by default Amazon Linux, it is the best cell only. Just try this command, okay? Uh, let me keep it in the other duplicate work. Just try to hit this command, cat slash etc slash os release. Okay. And try to check, is it exact same thing or not? Okay. If it is exact same thing, then it will be the best cell only. So just try, if it is not, then you can launch the EC2 instance with the exact version of Amazon Linux version two. Okay, so that can help us. Yeah, so let's come to our topic. So you have to just give dot slash hello world dot assets and I'll press enter. And this time you see, they are not saying permission denied. They are printing the exact out. That is hello world. That means our command is written inside this file, hello world dot asset. And now I don't have to manually type it. Go hello world every time, okay. Whenever somebody will tell me, can you run that file? I will just see, okay, this file is percent. Already permission is given. I will just get this command dot slash hello world dot asset. And output will be printed. If somebody will tell me 200 times also, we can print it easily. I don't have to manually type it. Okay. And this is about only one command. But take an example uh, in a company we are working on, and every day we are hitting four to five commands. Like the first command we always hit is the date, then we hit the cal command, then we hit the pwd command, then we hit the ls command. Okay. Like this will cycle continue. If you are getting this many commands, okay, every day to run, and you know that every day I will be running five to ten commands. So rather than writing these commands one by one, what you can do, you can write all these commands in a single file. So how? So let's see this. Again, just create a file. So I am creating a file with the name cal.sh. You can give any name, just don't forget that extension should be ending with the dot sh. Okay, just press it. And again, the first thing you have to enter is C then commit. Now, take an example. The first command I want to run is the date command. Second command I want to run as a gal. Third command I want to run as a PWD. Fourth command I want to run as LS. Okay. So this four command I want to run. Okay. So just you have to write the list of commands. Take an example, you are want to run the hundred command. So you can keep hundred commands in this file. Okay. Once you keep the hundred commands in this file, you will save this file. You can verify whether that content is saved or not. Content is saved. But currently, if I do ls s permission is not given x permission. So either you can give ch mode 744 or 755, it's totally on you. I'm giving 755 cal.sh. Permission will be changed. X permission will be added. Now, once the X permission is added and it becomes a green color. So, whenever I want to run, okay. So, rather than writing these four commands one by one, I will be just hitting the command dot slash cal.sh. And see, all the output came. This is the output of the date command. This is the output of the calendar command. This is the output of the PWD command, and this is the output of the LS command. Okay, like this way again, next day tomorrow, somebody will ask again and write this. Okay, and like this way, this cycle will be keep continuing. Okay, so this is the useful thing when you want to run the repetitive commands. Okay, every day, then you can use this. Thing. So are you able to correlate or like somebody not able to understand anything? Anybody here who are not able to correlate with these examples? Please, can you repeat? I'm kind of lost, please. Okay. Do, do, yeah, can you please? First one or second one? Which one I'm doing it to repeat? First one or second one? 
this one? This is common. Okay. So, so the first thing we are always writing, we are creating a file with the name cal.asset. Okay. Once we created the file, so the first thing we have to write this line. Okay. This is the cbank command. This line will be written. Then only our Linux will create is that this is not a normal file. This is a scripting file. So we have to run this commands on the bash cell. Okay. That's what the meaning is. Once you given this, then you have to hit the command. Like I want to run the calendar commands. Cal command output is what? <laughs> if I run this, uh, let me, this is the normal Linux. I am clearing all this. Thing. If I want to hit the cal command, output of calendar will come. I will hit the date command. I will hit, get the output of date command. Similarly for PWD, this and LS for this. So rather than writing this command again and again on the everyday basis, what I will do, I will keep all these four commands in a single file. Okay. So that what I done. If you try to read this cal.sh file, what I done, I written all these four commands in this file. So from now on, whenever I will be run this file, Okay, dot slash dot cal dot sh so it will be printing all the output. so see they are printing the date command out okay that is the first command second command i run the calendar third command i run the pwd fourth command i run the ls so they are showing the output. so manual rather than manually typing four commands one by one you are just running a single file okay and that single file is running that four commands so you don't have to move it. that is the benefit of this <clears throat> is it good yeah thank you and the, yeah as result is there so whenever you will be trying you can try it okay now we'll be going to know about the concept of variable so again before understanding the concept of variable uh, as any of you are not aware of the programming so let me let me give you the first a quick example of variable in the Python programming language. So see, if you want to run any Python related code, you can just hit the command Python compiler, okay? Python online compiler. And if you search it, you'll go to any of the link, okay? I'm going to the my first link. So they are giving you a screen, okay? In this screen, whatever you will write, okay? Their output will be printed in the right side. Like I written print, can you print the hello world? I will just click on run and you'll see here hello world is print. okay so like this way it is going to work so this is the simple thing now similarly if you want to add two numbers okay so like a is equal to five b is equal to six okay and you are saying that can you print a plus b okay and if i'll click on run you know that answer will be labeled okay and that is the concept of the variable here <laughs> That value of five is stored in the variable A. Value of six is stored in the variable B. And then whenever you are saying, can you print A plus B? Then they are not adding A plus B. They are adding the value of A plus B. That is five and six. And that's what output is there. Similarly, if I change this value, so you'll see output will be also changed because we are changing the value. Okay. Variable is constant, but value is getting changed. Yeah. And output is getting differentiated. So that is the difference between the normal uh, directly writing 15 plus 6 here or rather than writing in A plus B format. If you're writing in A plus B format, so you can easily change the value and your output will be changed. Okay. So this is the concept of the variable. And that the same thing will be going to see in our Linux here. Okay. This concept of variable. So here we talked about the first name, last name. Okay, so I'm going to give you example that also. So take an example, we are creating here uh, a variable with the name like this one. First name. Okay. And in this first name variable, I am giving some name. Uh, last name, we are creating a second variable. And here also I'm giving a name. <laughs> okay. Once I created this, now what do I have to do? I have to do print. Okay. Can you print <laughs> first name? Okay, and then the last name, what they will do. So let me show you. They are printing like this, but this is not coming great, right? So what you can do is you can write like this, first name plus, give some space, okay? And then give one plus. Now this time what you will see, there will be a space will come in. 
Similarly, take an example, you want to write like this. Uh, now what will happen? If we'll try to see, they are printing first name, okay? And then they are printing the name, this one, okay? Similarly, if you just write it here, or uh, in this bracket, last name, okay? And then if you print it like this, right? So you see, then they are printing like this. First time this one, last time this one. So like this way, you can do the changes. But you have to understand, whenever I am keeping something in the double code, then they are not printing it as a variable, okay? They are printing as it is, okay? But when I am keeping it outside of the double code, okay? They are taking, they are not printing the first name. Rather than printing the first name, they are printing the value of the first name, that is this one. Similarly, for the last name, when it is in the double code, they are printing as it is. But when the last name is outside of the double code, they are printing the value. Okay, so this is the normal concept we do in the Python. But in case of the Linux, it is a little bit different. Okay, so at our final goal will be this one only, like printing the first name and last name. But here you see the use case is a little bit different. Let me show you. Here all this. Uh, first thing we'll be creating a file with the name variable.sh. So you can understand that this is the example for variable. Uh, I will go I. <coughs> so there are so many lines. Either you can copy paste. Okay. So see, if you want to copy paste something in the party, so what you have to do, you have to just copy it from here, okay, like Control C. And in case of the party, rather than just doing, you have to just do the right click. Okay. Once press I, once you press I for the insert mode, then only you have to be able to paste it. So just press right click. Okay. You don't have to use Control B or anything. Just you have to press right click of your mouse. And see everything is pasted. So this is the way by which you can paste anything from your Windows to party machine. So let me just remove the extra things first. Will not get confused. Let me remove this one also for now. Let me remove this. Okay. <clears throat> so we created two variables. First variable is first name. Second variable is last name. We assigned the value for this. Okay. Once I assign the value, then you'll see <clears throat> my first name is rather than writing directly. Take an example. I'm just writing like this. My first name is first name. My last name is last name. Okay. Echo is the command. So what is the work of the echo? That also I said you that whatever you will say to print to the echo, echo will print as it is. Okay. So if I'll run this, what do you think? What will be the output? Anybody? If I'll run this, anybody? Kishun Rai is the output, sir. And what about this thing? My, I am writing like this. My first name is. This all things will be not going to print. My first name is Kishun. Okay. My last name is Rai. But you have to understand again one thing here that when you are saying that my first name is okay, and after that you are writing the first name okay. There is no any difference. Everything in the same color, everything. Okay. Everything, both things are present inside the double quote also. So if something is present in the double quote, okay. I said you, uh, in case of the Python also, when you are keeping something in the double quote, so they are not treating this first name as variable. Okay. They are printing as it is. That is the first. Name. If you are keeping something outside, then only they are printing. So similarly, whenever you will be talking about in this, okay. I done my first name is first name. So how this Linux will be going to know that this first name, I don't have to write as it is. Okay, I have to take the value of this key cell. They'll be never going to understand. So let me show you quickly. I will save this. Uh, the first thing, you have to give the permission, ch dot variable.sh, and to run this dot slash variable. So say they are printing my first name is first name, my last name is last name. That means they are not able to understand. Okay, that rather than printing the first name, we have to print the value of the first name. Okay. So 
let's again come inside this file. <clears throat> so if you want to make sure that Linux will be able to understand that the first time we are talking about, this is not a normal word. This is a variable. So before this, press I for insert and then just write the dollar symbol before first. Similarly for the last name also. If we are giving with the dollar and then the word, then Linux will treat, treat that, okay, this first name is not a normal word. This is a variable. So now from now on, whenever you will be running this file, they will be printing my first name is, and rather than printing the first name only, they will go with the value and the value they will take it from there. Okay, so that is the difference when you will be using the dollar. So now see, they are printing. Okay, so like this way, if you want to get the output of anything, okay, uh, from the variable side, you have to always use that dollar. Okay, then only this output will become. Similarly, one more interesting command in the Linux is mm -hmm. date. Okay, and every day we run the date command and date command output is this one. But take an example, somebody only want to see that <laughs> this Friday. Okay, they don't want to see these outputs. Okay, so how you can do this? We will let this command date <coughs> plus percentage capital E. See, they are just printing the Friday. They are not printing Gen 20 or something like this. But from where I am able to get this, that I have to print date plus percentage E, then the Friday will come. So again, you don't have to remember all these things. Clear all this? Just hit the command date. Can you give me your manual or something? So just I'm asking for the date. Can you give me help a little bit? So I'll just press enter. And see, they are giving us so many help here. So if I little bit maximize it, and if I'll come here, so see, they are saying, if you are using percentage S small e, okay, then I will just print SUM, sun. Okay, that is Sunday, basically. Okay, if you want me to print the full weekday name, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, okay, like this is the example. So you have to use percentage capital A. Similarly, if you want to use for the month name in the sort format, you have to use percentage a small v. If you want to use the full month like January, February, March, so you have to give with the percentage capital V. And like this way, they give us the so many examples. Okay. So whatever the things you require, you can take the help from this. Okay. So that is the meaning of this. So let me just make it shortcut. And again, if you try to write this date plus percentage, they are giving it Friday. If you just want to print FRI, what you'll be doing rather than capital A, just give a small A. So see FRI. Similarly, if I'll give B, they will be give Jan. If I'll give capital B, you'll see January it will be print. Okay, so like this way, this go. Now, similarly, uh, in this file itself, uh, whenever I am going inside the variable.sh, inside this, I'm creating one more variable. And that variable name I'm giving as DV. Sir, good morning. How can we go the previous comments? What is that uh, key? Okay. That just you have to hit the up command. Okay, up arrow. What? If you hit What's the up arrow, up arrow, up arrow. There are okay, right. arrows, right? Uh, up arrow, down arrow. So you will be hitting the up arrow, then you'll go into previous command. If you'll go into the down arrow, you'll be going with this command. Okay. So like this way. Say so like this way. Okay, so I'm going to previous command. Okay. Sir, what is that dot uh, sh is? Dot uh, sh is the file extension. Like whenever you are. Uh, is uh, regarding only dot. for. Uh, see, like whenever you are storing the Word document, Microsoft Word document, they are getting stored in the dot uh, docx format, right? Like Excel format, whenever you are writing some Excel file, it is stored in dot .xlx format. Similarly, PDF file, dot .ptf format, mp4 videos, dot .mp4 format. So similarly, a scripting file are stored in the dot .sh extension. Okay, that means it is a cell file. Okay, so this is the extension you have to give it. Whenever you are using this slash bin slash bash like this. Okay. So anybody can, by just understanding, seeing this, they will understand, okay, this is executable file. Your voice is breaking, sir. Is it? For everybody, my voice is breaking? 
sometimes no i think your internet is like because for others it is clear yeah so i was saying that you have to give the dot as such extension like for any type of the file you are creating rather than pdf file doc file okay so you give some format there like you cannot save a file pdf file without the dot pdf extension okay you cannot save the excel file without the dot excel x format because you, when you are opening the file explorer how windows is able to understand okay this is a pdf file because this is stored in the dot pdf format how they are able to understand okay these are the video files because these are they are understanding that these are the mp4 files so like this way there should be some extension will be available like epk file so its extension was dot epk okay so like this way extension is necessary so let's again come to our topic so yeah we are coming here and we are creating a variable with the name day and we know that day variable will be different like if today i will run it should be friday or tomorrow i'll be run it should be saturday again two day after tomorrow when i will run this file it will be sunday like this way it will be going so i will what i will store rather than just writing here like friday if i'll write friday what i have to do every day whenever i will hit this file okay i have to change okay manually i will come here i will change so rather than doing this manually what i can say i can say that you can store the value okay from this command hit space plus percentage capital a and we know that date plus percentage key command always going to give us today day. if today will be friday they will be giving us friday so in this day command friday will be stored Again, tomorrow when I will be running this file, so this command will be giving Saturday. Okay, so it will be printing Saturday. So like this way it will be like. So once we return this, we store the D value. So now I will just say echo. Okay, day is, and I will just give the dollar. Dollar day meaning is they will be asking for the value. Okay, rather than printing the day, and the value of the day will be coming from this. That is the I am closing the double quote. I am saving the file. Now, whenever I will run this file, dot slash variable dot slash, you see they are printing my name, last name, then they are saying today day is Friday. But again, tomorrow when I will be running the command, you will be saying that it will be the Saturday. After that, again, it will be Sunday. So this value will be keep changing as what will be the output of this data. Okay, so this value is totally dependent on this command date plus percentage capital A. Okay, so what will be the output of this command? They will be showing this. So like this way, you can assign any variable. Okay, and you can do your work. Similarly, if you talk about a condition based statement, okay. So if you know like there is a condition based statement also in our programming language either you go in python c plus plus java okay we always learn about the condition statement like if else so how this if command are working so if you have to understand so let me just give you a simple example here and you have to tell me what will be the output okay so if take an example i'm writing a is equal to 100 B is equal to 150. And if I'm writing if A is greater than B, okay, if this will be the condition satisfied, then what you have to do? You have to print A. Okay. what do you think like whenever i am running this command what will be the output so see normal condition i give it okay first i assign the value a is equal to 100 b is equal to 150 so now you understand that value of a is here 100 value of b is 150 okay so if somebody will ask you is 100 is greater than 150 is it true or is it false
is 100 is greater than 150. Is it true or false? Okay, yeah, false. So now if you'll try to run this command, you will see that nothing is pending. Why? Because this is the false statement. And if this is a false statement, they are not going to print anything. But now let's make the actual value of A greater than B. So take an example, I given A as 200. Now, if somebody will ask you, is 200 greater than B? So this will be a true statement. And once this statement will be true, then see what will happen. Oh, what about? <laughs> Okay, they are not adding it. I mean, it will be complex here. Yeah? Let me write like this way on this. Now, see what is it? Yeah, so, they are printing A is greater than B. But again, if you reduce the value of A, or A, maybe you can increase the value of B. So again, take an example, it will be 250. So again, what will happen? They will ask 200 is greater than 250. So this is again a false statement. And if it will be false statement, nothing will be printed. Okay. But again, if A will be greater, okay, then only this condition will be satisfied and they will be printing, yes, now A is greater than B. Okay. So this is a condition-based statement. So if this condition will be true, then only this thing is going to be printed. Condition will be false, then this can this will be not going to be printed. Okay. So, like this way, if you want to achieve in the Linux, okay, condition based statement. So in the Linux, we also have the option. So if you try to see, so let's create a the first thing will be creating a file name. Okay, so file name we are going to use is if condition.sh. Okay. You can use any file name, but again, we are talking about the if condition. That's why I give the file name as simple if condition.sh. No. So just I'm writing bi condition. Not. When I'm writing this, again, the new file will be created. The first thing you have to always do is cbank commit. Now we'll be creating two value. Okay, like number A, number B. So I'm just doing here a value name, or you can say a variable we are creating where we are storing the value of number A as 100. Value of number B or number B we are storing as 200. So these two things we done, we created two variables and we assigned the value as 100 and 200. Now I am writing again the if condition. And in case of the Linux, you cannot write like A is greater than B or A is small than B. Linux does not understand these all things, okay? In case of Linux, whenever you are talking about that, we have to give condition. So Linux say, keep it in the square bracket. That is the first thing, because I understand only a square bracket. And in this square bracket, what you have to do is write dollar num a. Write dollar num a. So again, you have to understand if you just write the number A, okay? So Linux is just understand that this is a number A. But if I'll write dollar number A, then Linux will understand, okay, we are talking about 100, okay? And in our case, we'll be talking about 100. We don't require anything about this one because this is a string, right? This is just a name. But we are going to compare the value and value can always be get with the dollar. Okay, that also I saw you in the previous example. Like if you don't write for dollar first name, then it will be just printing first name as it is. But if you will write dollar first name, then they will print always Kisan. Okay. So we just given dollar number, then we are giving a space. Then we are writing hyphen LT. LT is for lesser than. Right? Rather than writing like this symbol, okay, in Linux, you have to give hyphen LT. LT is for lesser than. If you want to compare with the greater than symbol, you have to give the GT. Okay, these two things we have to remember. LT for lesser than, GT for greater than. And which number I want to compare? I want to compare it with the number B. So I will give the dollar now B. Okay. That's all. If you write this statement, so what is the meaning of this? So if you'll see, num A is less than num B. Okay, so if this condition is satisfied, then what you have to do? Then I'm just writing if 
number a that is 100 is less than 200 then you have to do is you have to print that's why i'm writing the echo command echo just print that 100 num a so num a will be again it will be directly as 100 so 100 is is then dollar num b and just close the double quote and once everything is done, what we'll be doing? We'll be closing the if statement also using the just the reverse of if. What will be the reverse of if? Fi. So just write this. Now if we'll run this, so basically they will check is the number A is less than number B. So what is the value of number A? 100, number B 200. So they will check is 100 is less than 200. So this is a true statement. So if this will be true, then only they are going to print this. That's just 100 is less than 200. But if somehow number A I given as 300, number B I given as 200, then I will run this file. You will see that nothing will be printed. So I'll be going to show you both the way. So just save this file. Uh, again, ch mode permission we are giving. 755 if condition. And just run dot slash if condition dot as well. So whatever. Okay, wait. I think we missed something. Now we forget to give the space after the square bracket. Similarly, here also we have to we forget the space. Yeah, that's all. That's why they are not able to understand, and that's why they are saying in the square bracket there is some issue. Now let's again. This, okay, again hundred. Okay, hundred is not printing, but it is saying like that is less than two hundred. So let me quickly check again what is the issue. Okay, yeah, here see I given the wrong name. It will be num uh, a. Right, I given num b a. That's why they are not able to find that variable. So that was just a typing mistake. Uh, again, save it. And see, this time they are printing 100 is less than 200, and which is our the final goal. But if somehow you are increasing here, okay, let's increase the value of a to 300. So in this case, what will be the logic here? 300 is less than 200. Is this true statement? No, it is a false statement. And if it's, it will be the false statement, you will be see that there will be no output will come. See, nothing is printing. If I'll run this command, nothing will be printed. Because it is not less than. Okay, again, if we'll edit this file, and again, we'll make this a smaller, okay, like I gave just 50. Okay. 50. So now 50 is less than 200. Yes, this is a true statement. So you'll be seeing this time, it will be printed like this. 50 is less than. So like this way, you can change the value. You can check whether your if condition is satisfying, then only this will be printed. If condition will be not satisfied, this is not going to print. Okay. <clears throat> so anything you have to ask in this if one. Anybody? So these things will come with the practice. Okay. So after this class, just try to give. Which files? These files I already uploaded, right? Uh, are you added? <coughs> Get the drive access, Ram. Did you got the drive access? Yeah, I send you. I send my mail. Let him, no, let him, I did let not check as a full check concern. Yeah, you have right Rama Gopal ready, right? Yes, yes, sir. Rama Gopal, yes. Yeah, you, you have the access. So in this, you, you, Cloud19 is a folder in the Google Drive. Inside this, we'll be accessing all the videos. And in this lab file, we'll be seeing the Linux scripting file, okay, that we are talking about currently. We are referring to this document only. Yeah. Previous Linux files also uploaded, sir. Yeah, Linux is also there. Linux commands lab. Even the AWS free tier account, how to launch EC2 instance, how to connect using PuTTY, that all the files are there. Okay. So everything. But do we have class by tomorrow? Um, that again, I don't know. I have to confirm with them. If class will be there, you will get the notification. Okay. If not there, then you'll, you know, you'll not get it. Okay. 
Last week we did not have on the Saturday. I have to check with them. Is it? Yeah, so this is about the if condition. So try this and see this type of the condition, what happens now? Uh, in, as you are not aware of this Python thing, okay. So you will be thinking like that, okay, this is the greater than, that's why it is printing A is greater than B, okay. But what if this is a smaller, then we don't have to any way to print? Yes, you have the way, yes, you have to just write here. Uh, can you uh, stop yes. your, right? So we have to just write here else that if this condition is not satisfied, A is greater than. Okay, so then what will happen? We have to just say print A is smaller than B. Okay, and now if we'll try to run. So see, currently it is printing A is greater than B, but if I reduce the value from A is 300 to 100, so you'll see they will be printing this time A is smaller than B. Okay, so both the conditions is not satisfied. Greater than also, smaller than also. Uh, so whatever I am teaching you here, this example, this is the Python, okay? And in the Linux, whatever I'm teaching you, this is a scripting, okay? So that's why their syntax, everything is totally different. Okay, but why am I explaining you in the Python? So at least you get the basic idea of the Python programming language, okay? Because whenever you are going on this type of the roles, at least if you are not expertise, so you should get little bit basic understanding of this programming language, okay? So you'll be able to do good in the career. So if you want some website okay, uh, to just practice the basics of the Python, so you can search for Python to three years where this is a great website to learn and practice. Okay, just search for Python W3 school uh, and you will see this tutorial. So they give you the practice also, like you can write print hello world. And if you want to try it by yourself, you can just click on this okay? and they will give you this. Here you'll be writing the command. Here you'll be getting the output. Okay, you can change the value also from here by just like editing this. Okay, and take an example, I want to print my name. So I will just check the command run and you'll see that my name will be printed in my screen. Okay, so like this way you can try with the W3 school. In your free time, just try to get with 111 handle and you'll, they teach it the basic level so you'll be able to easily understand. Okay, this will give you a great help. Basic idea of the programming language as a DevOps engineer will give you a, like, see, there are, five people are applying for the same post, right? So all these five people will be knowing the DevOps domain, okay? If you will be doing, knowing a little bit more about what's the programming also, so you'll get the upper hand as compared to other four person who is applying for the same job, okay? So that you have to understand. So you can try this all, okay? And tomorrow we'll be completing the other command. <laughs> Mostly by tomorrow it will be completed. Okay, this is scripting work. And after this scripting totally after depends on Again, somebody want to say something? But actually, I have wondered. Actually, we are launched the EC2 instance. Then uh, we create that uh, uh, party. And whenever they establish the connection, EC2 uh, uh, in the EC2 and party. And then we have to create the permissions. Your sound is breaking. As they created the commands and everything we can do. Your sound is totally breaking. Actually, whenever we establish the connection in EC2 and uh, EC2 and uh, Putty, Putty, uh, whenever we first we have to create that permissions access in the root level. Is it right? Uh, see, if you are connecting with SSH, then only you have to talk about the permission. But if you are talking about the connect with party, you will not require any permission level access, right? You have to just change the PPK file, that's all. Whatever the PEM file you are downloading, that you have to convert to the PPK file. So you can refer these documents. I given in this lab file, refer this, learn how to launch EC2 instance. Okay. In this, there is a step of the party, okay, how to connect with the party. The second method, okay, for Windows people. 
So you can come here in this party method. You can see how installation is done, how I converted this PPK file by just searching the partition software. You have to click on load. Okay. And then you have to download this PEM file. Then you have to click on save private key. And that file will be generated a public key, basically a PPK file. And once this PPK file will be saved, so you have to come here. You have to give your ECT user at the rate IP address. Okay, from copying from here. Then what you have to do? Uh, once you return this ECT user at the rate IP address, you have to come to the SSH or credential. Here you have to click on browse and just you have to select the PPK file, whichever you converted now. Okay, that PPK you will do it and you will click on open. It will ask for accept. Just click on accept and you will be connected. There is nothing related to permission in the party. But yes, if you are going with the SSH for the Mac OS people, there I talked about the permission where we are running the command ch mode 400. Now you can understand what is the meaning of 400. That means we are just giving the read permission. So that is the way. So just try the party. Okay. Connectivity by referring to this document, you will be able to get. Others are not facing the problem in party connectivity, right? Sir, we, we suppose we are restricted some permissions for particular user, uh, where we can give that uh, restrictions. I can, yeah, we can give the restrictions in the root level. Is it right? As a root level, you will be giving the um, restriction for the other user. Yeah, that is correct. Okay. Have you attended the yesterday class? Should I have uh, joined as uh, some late, sir? Uh, so yesterday we talked about the much more details about the permission level. Okay, so you can go the recordings of the yesterday class. So you'll be able to understand easily. Okay, yesterday topic was about all the permissions, everything. Okay. So yeah, that's all from my side for today. Uh, tomorrow we'll be completing the other things. Okay. Thanks, all of you.